Hi everyone. Let's let's try it. Does it work? Uh, do you see something changing? All right, all right. Um. So okay, I'm ready to start. Are you? All right. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, I hope everything is fine, and we can talk a little bit about the subjects I'm personally interested in. My name is Alexander. I'm software architect, books author, experience developer, yeah, and a little bit of IT poet, just a little bit in Russian. I was supposed to give a personal talk, but the visa officer said, your talk is too controversial. You should stay away from the United States. This is for your good. This is why I'm speaking remotely today. I hope this won't make any problem and we will have a productive discussion, okay? Unfortunately, I can't see you, but if you are there, I will be glad to have a discussion. I'm in the industry for 15 years and I've seen some um, suboptimal things, especially in functional programming. There is a lot of suboptimal things in there. I wrote two books about that about the things. And I first wanted to give a technical talk and present you my ideas about functional design, functional architecture, about pragmatic type level design, and the book I am currently working on. These topics are underrepresented in the literature and they are very important too. But then I realized there, there are even more important things and these things require our attention. Let me ask you a question. How do we decide who to listen? Typically, um, if you feel the person shares our system of values, we listen to them. If our system of values mismatch, mm, no arguments may work, right? This is uh, uh, irrational, but it is what it is. This is why I'm giving a social talk today, not a technical one. I want to share my system of values with you because I believe this will make a much bigger impact. But, but first, let me tell you a story. Functional programming is much younger than object-oriented programming. It was born when Lisp introduced lambdas. It was a great time. It was a novel language. Garbage collection, lambdas, dynamic typing, absolutely amazing. And it was only the beginning. One decade later, we see more functional languages on the scene. New brilliant ideas have been introduced, such as strong static type systems, purity, type inference. Look at those languages, ML, Scheme, Miranda, and Erlang, for, for example, really good ones. There were, however, some other languages, and they were ugly. Horrible C, and even more horrible C++. Terrible Cabal. Awful, awful. Uh, Fortran. Fortran. They all held, had the same sins. Impurity, unsafety, mutability, stateful objects, uh, and, of course, lack of theoretical foundations. These languages barely worked. They could not compete with the excellent functional paradigm. It wasn't even a battle. It was beating of a baby. These ugly languages lacked correctness and mathematical rigor. But correctness and mathematical rigor is what the industry really wanted. And the functional languages were here to provide. In fact, this is what created the industry in the first place. Nothing could challenge functional languages from their dominance. A true era of heaven has begun, the era of math. It's this time when category theory, dependent types, formal verification methods, and other disciplines have emerged. They offered a full-scale methodology for building useful and correct software. Nothing from OOP could even remotely compete. The world has entered the brightest time of all and will never turn back. All right, all right. We all know this story is fake, right? 
It's quite the, the opposite, actually. Object-oriented languages won and functional languages lost. And we should ask why. Why? Why is that? There should be something, right? Some reason why such a rigorous paradigm could not become mainstream. Why are we not in a fun pure functional utopia yet? Why functional languages lost completely? Did they actually? I'll give you my considerations, but first let me show you the politeness burger. Politeness burger. They say I should surround my critic with something good. This will make the impression that I'm speaking in good faith. They say it's politeness. Otherwise, neither of my arguments will work. I don't understand this, but all right, all right. This is my politeness burger, okay? I love functional programming. Learning Haskell was literally the best thing that happened to me uh, in programming. my advanced book about my passion in Haskell and functional programming, right? Now some critics. People, we need to talk. Houston, we have a problem. Let me say this to attract the attention. Functional languages are dead. But they are still great and we all necromaniacs, right? <laughs> it's the reason why our languages are dead because we are necromaniacs. Yeah, that's the main reason, of course. <laughs> Mm. Uh, Finita la comedia. Uh, thank you. Please um, buy and read my books. Uh, they are awesome and truly insightful and foundational. Um, right? Uh, I'm too quick. I, I have some time. Uh, maybe maybe I'll uh, continue my talk because I have extra content for you. Okay? Well, mm, let's then talk about the real situation in functional languages as we see it. You can disagree for sure. This is the opinion by John DeGos. Pure functional programming is not remotely popular. In fact, it's less popular now than in the past. Pure functional programming can be considered a failure, in my opinion, he said. So uh, John thinks that pure functional programming failed. Pure here means, um, all right, it means Haskell and Scala. I guess, because uh, there are many other languages, right? Uh, which are not, not quite pure. Do we have actually evidence for that? Hmm. I believe uh, this Google trend somewhat confirms that. Haskell is un very unpopular today. I feel the popularity of Haskell is all time low. Uh, sorry. Uh, Haskell had many chances but something went wrong. There is a Haskell Foundation, by the way. Uh, it's an organization that is intended to push Haskell to the industry. Uh, it works almost for three years, right? Mm, but Haskell is still on the decline, uh, according to the graph. Mm, don't mind the spikes, it's just algorithm update. Consider the ever declining dynamics. Uh, I believe uh, this graph uh, reflects reality in some way. Hmm. Why pure functional programming is declining? Why strong mathematical foundations were not enough? Why intellectual excellence is not a guarantee of success? If you are so smart, why are you so poor? I call this Haskell superiority paradox. Haskell superiority paradox is the true greatness of the language that is only comparable to its inability to deliver sensible results. I'm, I'm overgeneralizing of sh for sure, uh, but let me overgeneralize uh, to make a point, okay? Hmm. Well, uh, I also don't want to make an impression that I don't respect uh, what was done in the field, uh, in particular in Haskell. The amount of work is actually impressive, mind blogging. Well, you, you, you got it. Uh, we had a good compiler, you see. There is a package uh, storage, even to stackage and hackage, for example, right? Now, there are various libraries. Some of them are even good. Uh, there are uh, good enough tools. 
Stack, Cabal, uh, something else. Uh, currently, um, lang Haskell language server is working more or less, right? So uh, learning materials, uh, they're uh, growing. We have more than a decade, late, uh, a decade previously, right? Haskell has a very deep mathematical foundation. Uh, this required a lot of work for sure. So don't, don't get me wrong. I acknowledge this. Haskell is also very influential. It popularized several unique concepts, monads, purity, uh, side effects control, uh, algebraic data types, uh, and what's not. Other languages borrow features from it and follow. Could Haskell monetize its technical leadership? I believe it could. Could it become an important industry language? I'm sure it could. This was, there were some ch chances, I believe, but the story was different. Haskell failed to deliver in 30 years. Golang is a much younger, it's much uglier, but it over delivered in a decade. I think some reasons are technical, but most, most reasons are social. There is a system of values that prevents Haskell to become popular. I say Haskell, but actually we've, uh, we have many functional languages out there. Maybe Scala, maybe Erlang, um, maybe PureScript, uh, OCaml, uh, Clojure, whatever. Uh, most of these problems are common to these languages. Still, of course, um, they all are different and uh, these subtle differences are important too. Uh, but we should try to generalize to see uh, core problems, right? I elaborate uh, what constitutes the system of values and how it was formed. Let's talk, let's talk about the era of functional programming. The eras, many eras. Different eras had different challenges to overcome. At first, everything was, was fine. There were on, we were only starting, right? So much to do. There is no industry yet. Uh, only a bare ground of uh, untouched stuff. Nothing to battle for because there was no money uh, and there were huge opportunities for everyone. Uh, it was the era of research and development, uh, the era of true hackers, uh, very interesting era, much before I was born. In 1990s, something strange started happening. The market started growing like crazy. Object-oriented languages skyrocketed. The industry entered its exponential growth phase. But functional languages missed this. Functional developers neglected the industry and isolated themselves from the real world. Object-oriented programming, hmm, its achievements didn't matter uh, anything to them. OP was just disgusting. What were the main problems in this era? First, it's certainly isolationism instead of collaboration. Uh, I don't know, maybe functional developers dreamed to build uh, the parallel industry or even parallel universe. Next, the attitude. We have our own way. That's... Mm, that's interesting. What's so wrong with learning all ways? I don't understand. Why you deliberately choose to be ignorant? That That's strange to me, actually. I guess functional developers were very busy to notice the industry. Or maybe the industry was too small for them to notice. That's, that's a question. That's a miser mystery. Also, I don't understand the attitude to treat technologies emotionally. Freud would have many questions here, really. Ah, it's OOP. Oh, it's a disaster. Uh, if I touch OOP, the world will, will end, all right? Finally, why not learn from each other? We all are different. Let's be friends. Let's exchange experiences and opinions. Unfortunately, the next 10 years, worsened the distance. Functional developers found new ways to stay away from the real world. They were vastly uninterested in dealing with businesses. 
we are too intelligent for you, uh, for your uh, suboptimal thing. We know math and you don't. Category theory, abstract algebra, type theories, come back when you are worthy. I call this era, era of idealism. But the industry didn't care. The industry was busy too, creating methodologies, approaches, business solutions, because they needed the discipline of software engineering to move forward, to do their stuff. Ah, by the way, these are great books. Um, are there heretics in the room? Unfortunately, I don't see you, but if you are there, please raise your hand. If you did, if you raised your hand, um, expect inquisition. It will come for you. It will, will come for me, uh, after you, after me. And um, well, yeah, all of us. Mm. Mm. Mathematics is also idealism, but functional programming is not math. It's not math in the same way as physics is not math. It uses math a lot, but requires a different reasoning framework. Let's be honest. Functional programming and Haskell in particular attract people because these people want to learn math. The language is secondary here. They want to share their love to math. They want to turn everyone into this cult. This is why we see so much of it. It's not, it's not bad. Got me right, it's not bad. It just misses the point. So what was done wrongly in this era? Well, idealism prevailed over pragmatism, but pragmatism is needed for adoption by definition. Abstract research prevailed over practical applications. I strongly believe that every language feature should be justified from the practical perspective. I've heard that in Rust, uh, they do this. Uh, they uh, only accept features that could be uh, presented how they use, how to use them and how to teach them. That's an interesting approach and uh, functional languages such as Haskell and Scala could, could learn from Rust. Types, do, types is documentation. Well, uh, clearly they are not, or maybe to some degree, you need a normal documentation too. Uh, uh, believe me, it's difficult to make. Papers for learning. Uh, I forgot how many times I was told that uh, I must read papers. Otherwise, I'm not a true high schooler. Mm, yeah, I'm just an author of advanced books. Mm, this doesn't count, right? Mm, I should probably create a long 500 pages paper from my book to become worthy for their attention. Vanity projects versus useful projects. Adoption as a research project. Well, actually, uh, adoption should be a business project. Otherwise, it won't work. Mm -mm. Remember the story of ChatGPT. Its research has been struggling for years uh, somewhere behind the scenes until they decided to make a, a business product. And after that, they accelerated to the speed of light. And we use this product, so millions of, millions of people use this product right now, just because they wanted to create a product and yeah. Finally, math. If you want to learn math, learn math. But math is a vastly different discipline than software engineering. What are your real goals? Mm, what do we see next? Functional communities doubled down. It's not just a cult anymore. It's the whole religion of with own misbeliefs. I mean, in general, again, right? Functional communities are diverse and wide yet. Yeah, but we are talking about the impression that we make to the outside world. This is what the world sees. It sees our misbelief and strange attitudes uh, because we don't express enough pragmatism. One harmful and immature misbelief is that complexity as a concept doesn't exist. Hmm. In mathematics, Complex proofs are fine, 
they don't make theorem bad. It will be better to have simpler proofs for sure. But complex proofs are fine. Yeah. In programming, complexity is important. Controlling complexity is the main task of software design. This is what software engineers do. They must think about complexity and take weighted decisions. This is, by the way, what expert beginners believe. Expert beginners in software engineering, not in computer science, all right? Because uh, these two disciplines are vastly different, very different. To expert beginners, complexity is not a problem. They write complex code and feel fine. They don't progress anymore. To, pro to progress, they should learn software engineering. And, the, and there is a lot of stuff here. Software architectures, uh, design, testing approaches, uh, methodologies, best practices, uh, um, what's not. A lot of stuff. Um, yeah. And this knowledge uh, helps, helps us to, big, to build big applications with good quality. Uh, same true for functional programming. But software engineering is not computer science. Neither it is math. Math is needed but it's complexity. Code usually... Um, understanding this is a matter of experience and maturity. This is how we progress. So this is the era of misbeliefs. Yeah, no, no such complexity misbelief. Uh, correctness at any costs misbelief. Uh, in, in other words, perfectionism. Uh, functional programming is math. To some degree, yes, but actually not quite. Simplicity is anti-intellectualism. I was accused in being anti-intellectual for my system of values. I wish I could be an intellectual, but I am a mediocre books author, sorry. OP is garbage. My, my stream is wrong. Uh, we don't need to follow the rules of the industry. These are all misbeliefs, and they prevent functional languages from being more popular in the industry. And what happens when misbeliefs meet the reality? People either listen to the voice of reason or double down. At mostly, they double down. At least, functional communities did. Misbeliefs led to the expected result. Functional languages are unpopular. Functional developers feel denial and resentment. It's not our fault. We did everything right. It's the industry. It is unjust. There are bad guys there. We should fix them. We should fix injustices. It's our primary goal. The era of ideology has come. We all know what I'm talking about. We've seen this a lot in Scala and Haskell in the past years. It's all started around uh, 2018, I believe, and not only in our programming communities. In fact, uh, the ideology in functional communities is just a small piece of the bigger cultural landscape. We've seen surreal and honest, completely destructive actions. We've seen how a programming languages become become becomes uh, a weapon, a political weapon for pushing the narrative. We've seen false allegations and mass canceling without evidence. No critical thinking, no rationalism, no proper merit principle. Only group thinking and emotional manipulation. If you don't support the narrative, no matter what you did, you will be ignored at best or cancelled at worst. I will avoid calling the names here. All right? Uh, I will avoid exposing any details, but this is very destructive for the adoption. I don't know what will happen, happen next. I hope the era of uh, ideology is at it, its end. Uh, or maybe I am exaggerating. I'm. I'm not. I don't know. Uh, let me know what your uh, thoughts and let's have a discussion about that. But the last topic I want to talk about is the merit principle. Technology is people. Neil Armstrong from the United States 
was once on the moon. Why can't we repeat this? Uh, technical documentation is still there, right? Gathering some dust in some boxes, um, go and build uh, a new Saturn V rocket was the problem. But there is no people anymore who'd be able to recreate that process. The process was people oriented. All the engineers from that era have retired already. You need new people. Technology is people, and people is system of values. We do not promote a technology only. We promote a system of values that stands behind it. And the system of values is a person. This means to promote a technology, we should also promote specific people. We select these people according to the merit principle and common sense. These people should demonstrate to the outer world that we have serious intentions. These people should be pragmatic. Experts, teachers, advocates, functional languages should have their pragmatic champions, not only idealistic people. Otherwise, the outside world won't believe you. And this is exactly what is happening right now. The outside world doesn't believe us. We promote, promote the idealistic system of values. We are trying to build utopia. The goal is not adoption anymore. The goal is to push certain social ideas. Functional languages are not useful, uh, are not a useful tool, but rather a weapon to fight injustices. And it is justified to bash talents because everyone should be equal in this utopia. Bash intelligence is certainly not a merit principle. Is this harmful to the adoption? <laughs> no, no, certainly not. What are you talking about? Uh, well, actually, yes. Uh, I asked Grok, uh, by the way, and he, he confirmed that the drama in the Scala community is destructive. The industry is shocked by that. I don't really know how to convince uh, the industry again that functional languages are worth it. This is why I think uh, functional languages uh, are unlikely to recover, unfortunately. Yeah, because I put all my horses in this race uh, 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. Now I should return to good things, finally. Remember that politeness burger, mm, something good, some, some critics, and something good. This is something good. This is the last part of my talk. I love functional programming. Uh, I love functional languages, everyone, uh, all of them. Uh, I also love object-oriented languages and other languages and everything else in the industry just because... Uh, uh, it's so different and so many interesting ideas. I have no reason to keep myself from these ideas uh, following some emotional uh, reaction. Mm, that's not my way. Functional programming itself is very popular. In, I mean, functional programming, not pure functional programming, not to functional languages, just functional programming. And very used in the mainstream languages. Uh, lambdas are everywhere. Functional libraries, uh, frameworks. For example, in JavaScript, there is a Ramda library. React uses uh, some functional ideas inside uh, inside um, its internals. Uh, in C++, there is uh, an approach called concepts, there, which is um, type classes from Haskell, kind of. There are ranges like li the library. There is... Uh, Link in C-sharp and uh, streams in Java, which is a functional way to mm, transport data. All these diff technologies are massively functional and very popular too. Uh, there are even monads in different languages. Yeah. So functional programming is actually everywhere. And we can mm, confirm this by mm, searching for functional programming languages, uh, books in, in those languages. For example, um, in Java, in JavaScript, in C++. One more consideration is that the notion of paradigm is completely obsolete because every language today, every modern language, every language that respects itself is multi-paradigm. It allows for different styles of programming. Uh, yeah, consider these books, by the way. It's only a fraction. Uh, 
C++, functional programming in C++ by Ivan Chugich. I, I contributed to it as well by reviewing uh, the, the proposal of this book. So yeah, I have a little bit uh, relation to this book as well. Very great book, study, by, by the way, yeah. Uh, not all of them even mentioned the word monad, but uh, still these books are um, what what the industry sees practical about functional programming. Uh, yeah, and I have a dream that once upon a time, functional languages will become a servant of humans and will bring a lot of joy into our industry because the world really wants that. It really wants practical functional programming. A language should serve people, not vice versa. Don't turn functional programming into a sacred idol. There is nothing sacred in functional languages. There is nothing sacred in mathematics. And there is a place for all of us having different views, opinions, or how, how to do things. Mm, yeah. Mm. So yes, absolutely, but accept, uh, but accept the fact that adoption requires pragmatism. So this is my last thesis. Functional programming is great. Uh, the mainstream constantly rejects the utopian system of values coming from FP, but accepts the objective truth that some functional programming elements are useful in real world practice. This is all I wanted to tell you today. Support pragmatism, support the merit principle, support me if you can uh, buy and read my books and stay rational. Yeah, currently working on the third book. So yeah, more, more things to come. Uh, maybe subscribe to me on Twitter and thank you. Uh, let me know what you think about that. Is it exaggeration? Is it a, a misbelief from my side or there is some point to think about? That's all. Thank you, folks. Excuse me, uh, excuse me. May I ask to to speak closer to the microphone, please? Yeah, good. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> yeah, uh, I believe you said there is a lot of things that were suboptimal or are suboptimal, right? In 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 the mainstream. Well, actually, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I completely agree because uh, I didn't yet see, haven't yet seen any good work base, uh, code base, just good enough. I, I don't ask perfect, just good enough for code base. But all the code bases I've seen were uh, suboptimal <laughs> in 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 many ways. Yeah. Uh, for example, there were many. Uh, places for functional programming uh, in, in several code bases in my previous uh, works. But it was difficult to introduce uh, functional ideas to the team because of different reasons, partially because uh, the mainstream developers uh, didn't like the, the way we communicate, uh, not you and me probably, but the, in general, right, in, in forums. And, and they transferred this uh, not disagreement, but uh, re denial, re reject, re rejection of uh, of this uh, communication style, they transfer it to the uh, functional languages and functional approaches too. So people react emotionally, and uh, instead of mm, treating technologies as tools, they uh, start uh, assi assigning those tools all the scenes people have. Mm. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you you will have uh, some uh, lunch right now. Food will increase your uh, internal feeling. Yeah. It will boost your. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I wish I would yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Ah. Uh, ah.
yeah thank you for your question yeah uh, we all know that python is uh, a leading language in, um, in artificial intelligence right and i'm horrified I, i'm scared horrified by this idea that artificial intelligent general artificial intelligent will be written in python uh, it i cannot sleep about you know, with this uh, thought but still uh, correctness in functional programming can mean many things and people uh, define correctness in different ways well certainly if you have a dynamic uh, language with dynamic types uh, there is a lot uh, there are a lot of risks to write something incorrectly and this is the first level of correctness just a static type uh, system uh, and our languages like c++ c sharp and others uh, do provide such a low level correctness uh, next correctness comes from the idea to encode uh, domain notions and business uh, processes uh, more properly with uh, functional tools such as algebraic data types Again, uh, our mainstream languages can do that, and we actually uh, do that even if you don't understand that. Uh, but this is only the second layer of correctness, right? We can encode our domain uh, domain so that it would be difficult to construct it wrongly because uh, algebraic data types would not match. You you could not you cannot construct uh, them the way that is wrong but uh, still logical errors like plus minus one or uh, sending money without uh, uh, withdrawing it and etc these logical errors are still there and they cannot be eliminated by those things well at least completely and the next level of correctness comes uh, with the idea to lift more uh, things to the type level in, in the belief that this will help to, to eliminate a, a class of errors, potential errors. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes it brings more uh, complexity than benefits. Uh, and also logical errors, uh, you cannot eliminate them completely. Because uh, in my opinion, correctness is not a technical term, is not a technical idea. It's uh, Correctness is always about meaning, and you cannot formalize meaning, even on the type level, even with formal verification methods. You can test it. You can uh, ensure that some meaning is encoded in your, uh, in, in, is there in your code. But if you uh, misunderstood the domain, if you uh, encoded the meaning as you understand it, but it's wrong, in your understanding, nothing from correctness methods will help. Because uh, the first thing, the core of correctness, uh, the essence of correctness should be meaning. Why the industry uh, refuses uh, all those high level of correctness, uh, that's a question for sure. But um, in my opinion, first it's uh, unfamiliarity with, me with methods, and second, uh, too much complexity.